This is the Good Bit Podcast, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in this week. It's another episode. I believe this is episode 97. Oh, that's a big one. Well, that's your year. It's my year the year I was born. That's Not right. the year 97, it was 1997, that's which close. is the year 1997 B A. None of them. What's the, what'd you say? Not BC? No, none of them. What is it? This say? is AD. This is AD. That's right. This is 1, I don't 000... think we're in AD either. Yeah. I think we're just 1990. After. I don't know anything about religion. Yeah. We're yeah. the same school. We're Listen, the same family. So... We are on the countdown to episode 100. Yeah, what are you doing for episode 100? That would be telling. Um, but the plan... <laughs> the plan was to get some form of like massive guest. Right. Didn't work. So, what I've done is... I've contacted Aaron Dockard, oh. the person who hosted the first episode ever of The Good Bit, and uh, we're going to talk about one of our favourite movies of all time on episode 100. You just said you didn't want to tell what you were doing, and you just told them. Well, I've not told them the film. Do you know what? You remember I told you? No. So this is weird, Maybe. so we usually oh, yeah. I'm doing this on, usually I do this you know, remotely or whatever, um, but I'm here with Sister Rachel, That's so we're sitting on the same couch in front of each other, uh, we're sitting far too close for normal liking. Yeah, it's a bit weird. And we have the camera pointing towards us, so it's not as if it's like a webcam like normal, so please bear with us if this sounds it's a bit weird. We have to look like this, because it's pointing right at us. It's like, okay, yeah. hi. <laughs> Hello, can you hear us and can you see us? You can. I don't know. I think so. Yeah, well, we have to do this episode today because in a couple of days' time, we're going on holiday. <laughs> we are. We are going to a place called Costa Deki. And a place Costa called Adeki, not Costa Deki. Yeah, but it's not like Costa Adeki. Costa Adeki. Yeah. Right, Costa Adeki. <laughs> um, we're going to Costa Adeki at a place called Tenerife, which uh, we actually did a podcast from Tenerife before. We did. I'm pretty sure people know what Tenerife is. You never a know. place called Tenerife. It's a Canary island and it's off the coast of Africa next to the Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean. That is correct. Um, we so... think. <laughs> we think so. If not, the last five years were at least they a have lie. been a lie. We're going there. Um, the kind of neighbourhood we're staying in is called Fanaby, mm-hmm. which we found quite funny being Scottish people. And it's uh, actually Fanaby apparently, <laughs> and we've been calling I it see. Fanaby because we're Scottish. Fanaby and uh, the hotel we're staying at are called the Boab Suites, yes. which is spelled B O A B A B A B W A Boab Suites. But again, being another like Scottish lingo person, um. <laughs> I speak Scottish. I've been saying the Bob sweets. So uh, that's funny. doesn't sound as flattening as it maybe should. You definitely can't say that in front of any Tenerifians. Tenerifians? That's definitely not right. You need to hold that a little bit closer to your mouth. Tenerifers? Tenerifers? No. <laughs> that's not right either. Couple of tens. Tenors. Tenors. I think they're called tenors. We're going to call them that. I'm glad we're going to Tenerife in 2022. Because if we'd went a little bit earlier, it would have been five a reef. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Doesn't make even. I keep looking at my hair. Uh-huh. It's really bothering me. You need to remember as well. More people listen. Yeah, I know, but I'm just but saying it's really. It is I strange the fact that they were like annoying. pointing a camera towards us. Let's move closer. I hear this. I'm like, so much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just so... feel like this has to be right up in my mouth now because I'm scared. Yeah. I uh, I've been watching podcasts recently called the one called Hey Babe, um, with Sal from Practical Jokers yeah. and a comedian called Chris Stefano, and the whole episode. Uh, the whole series they do every episode is like on their couch with two handheld microphones. Uh-huh. So when I knew we were doing this today, we could have easily got in like the one microphone and put it in the middle and just spoke around it. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I want the aesthetic of the two microphones. We just want to be Sal and Chris. Chris is definitely. Well, Chris. I'll be Chris, you be Sal. I can do that, but you have a friend called Sal, so that's a bit weird. That is weird. Shout out to Sal, probably not listening. Um, <laughs> not a very good friend. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and I also, Sal, are you right? Thank you. So Volcano from Practical Jokers or the Tenderloins, as the comedy trip is called, also has a podcast with a guy called Joe DeRosa, and it's a food podcast, mm-hmm. and uh, they compare like their favourite foods and stuff. It's called Taste Buds, yeah, and that's one of my favourite things. It's like, very smart. What a great idea! What a great name for a podcast. It's and smart. they like debate foods, mm-hmm. so they'll do like pizza versus pasta they'll do ketchup versus barbecue sauce or whatever it is so what i thought we could do is we could compare either we could compare foods or we could compare a movie fair but also i just want to say that kerry's went to five guys the other day and she said i'm just thinking next time i'm not gonna get chips oh <gasps> imagine not liking five guys chips i want this on the podcast i want this on record imagine not liking chips so who is keris oh, keris is my best friend but not anymore after she was like five guys chips joke no 
But <laughs> she never had five guys, and then she went the other day, and she was like, oh, my God, it was so nice. Like, next time I would just get a bigger burger and not get chips, though. It's that's psycho behaviour. How many go with five? And she also said to me before, she went, probably just get a chicken burger anyway. I went, I don't think they do chicken a burgers. chicken burger? I went, I don't think they do chicken burgers. She went, do they not? And do they I was do like, hot dogs? I don't think so. And then she went, but she liked the burger when she did have it, but... Because she was like, I need to take stuff off because she's like me, we're specific with foods. Mm -hmm. But obviously you make it up kind of yourself. Like you ask if you want extra stuff on it. So it Yeah, like... let's talk about that then because you, I know a few fussy eaters, but you are probably... I take the crown. You take the cake, no pun intended. Um, I don't really like cake. What, exactly. So what are your favourite foods and least favourite foods? My favourite foods are mozzarella sticks, uh, chips in general. Well, fries more than chips. Chips um, in general. McDonald's, Nando's. Hash, hash browns. browns. Hash brown. Da -da. Oh. <laughs> There's a Harry Styles lyric in there somewhere. From what, the new album? Yeah. Let's tell that story. So uh, the new album is coming out. Rachel is a big sort of One Direction fan, Harry Styles fan. I have a One Direction uh, tattoo. One Direction tattoo. She's going to see Harry Styles live and in Living Colour. Uh, not the band Living Colour. It's just going to be Harry Styles and his band. Uh, live at Ibrox Stadium, plays very close to my heart. Uh, going on Saturday night, the night before we leave on the plane. Yes, that's not that's not promising to be honest. The but... fanaby, yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah. So the, the countdown to Harry Styles' new album was a big thing that Rachel was talking about, mm -hmm. and the new album was called Harry's House. I know this because I live with Rachel, but I also do enjoy a lot of Harry Styles' music. He listened to it at midnight, so he's a true Harry. So fan. because I knew it was coming out midnight that night, I thought I'm gonna. I'm a good brother. I wanted to make my sister laugh. The first song on Harry's new album is called Music for a Sushi Restaurant. Or as Rachel likes to call it, Sushi for a Music Restaurant. Like, can and I keep it is, getting the wrong? It is so funky, right? Yeah. It is such a jam. And I just didn't expect it. I don't know why I didn't expect it, because a lot of his music is quite experimental and yeah, stuff. Yeah, but I feel like every album sounds different, though. So, I mean, you don't really know. No, exactly. So, I listened to the song, kicked off the album with the opener, Music for a Sushi Restaurant. And it's just, I don't know, I just did not expect it. Uh, I just got distracted because a whole new bruiser has opened on... <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, hi Norton. So remind me where we were at. I'm gonna go fix the laptop. Okay, I hold a little mic. I really hope there's no one Mike called Mike listening to this. I hold Mike. And I'm like, I'll hold him. Not him though, just this mic. Not your mic. My mic. Sushi for music restaurant, sushi for whatever you want. You were talking about how Music for a Sushi Restaurant was yes. the first song you listened to. Cool jam. So if you've heard the song, if you've not, go listen to it right now. Um, so because it was midnight and I know Rachel had went to bed, but she was like looking forward to hearing the album for the first time. She was going to like listen I was to it all in one go. So you know how on Snapchat, the very famous app, you, <laughs> when you're making a video, but if you've got music playing through your phone or whatever device you're using, the kind of song will come through in the video of Snapchat. Yeah. So that was on and it was the Harry's opening track, music for a sushi restaurant. And I just decided that I was like total like busting some moves. Like I was making They were great. Shapes. They were great. I was dancing. To this song, right? <laughs> Strictly just going to Rachel's phone just to make her laugh or whatever. Um, but what I didn't realise was I just recently got Apple AirPods, and because they're not connected to the phone, it's like a Bluetooth connection, so that doesn't pick up the music that's on Spotify. And it's almost like past midnight, right? So the house is in utter silence, <laughs> and I'm just sitting absolutely vibing in this dance. Um, floorboards were creaking. Floorboards were creaking. You could probably hear my breath. I was like. <laughs> So it was like bones creaking and everything. <laughs> so I sent sorts. Rachel absolutely howling at this idea, the fact that I tried to send this video me dancing to this song. There was and I'm no just music. Dancing to silence, thinking that she's going to find this really funny. I did. Then I come in the next day, and Rachel and aforementioned Keris, <laughs> uh, Rachel's best friend, was saying that you've made me into a meme yeah. and put me on TikTok. <laughs> no, I didn't put you on TikTok. You were thinking about it. I should, though. Maybe you would be a famous TikTok dancer, Maybe. who knows? No, we decided to use uh, Instagram and like put it as if we were going to put a story up but not actually post it and then like put music over it. So, because obviously there's no music in the actual video. Oh, Chris, you're right. Yeah. Okay, he's fine. Um, <coughs> I joke. You quite finished. I joke. Right. So then we put music over it um, and like covered the caption and so now he's just dancing to all sorts of songs. We've had a night to remember from High School Musical. First class by the one and only Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow, I said that. Jack right. Harlow, that seemed to be the best one. Yeah, that was Keris. That was Keris because we're obsessed with that song. But 
uh, what else did we do? Matilda by Harry Styles, but like the saddest part of the whole song, and Kerry thinks it's so funny. I'm just like throwing. He's absolutely shoot. going for it, and it's just like. Yeah. Pain and it's no big deal. <laughs> and he's just like <laughs> yeah. dancing. It's honestly great. That was really funny. That was great. Um, I'm not saying my bit was funny, but the fact you've turned me into a meme, and the fact that I just there was utter silence. The silent ones funny as that's well. What, like, that's what made me laugh the most. The utter silence. It's funny. We're going to watch them after this now because they're really funny. Okay. We'll not put it on YouTube though. No. <laughs> um, so you mentioned obviously a night to remember from High School Musical Three. Great segue. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about what we did recently. So, me and Rachel are siblings, four years apart. <laughs> Good stuff. I don't know if you look the same. It's weird. You're wearing glasses. I was and about I'm to not. say that you're not wearing your glasses, so we and I have makeup on, so maybe we don't look as alike. I know. We look really alike when we're both wearing glasses, and we look really alike when we're both not wearing glasses. Yes, and when my hair's up, especially because yeah. like we look really similar. We have like the same freckles and stuff. Okay, and so we're four eyebrows. years apart, and uh, just for whatever reason, I don't know. We've just never really like been on like a night out together. Like I've yeah, had my friends. I feel like and, you don't really. Why would you? You know what I mean. Yeah. But just the, out of curiosity. But we maybe we, like bumped into each other, I guess. But like or got home together, I guess. But like this actual like planning, we're going out on a night out yeah. together. Uh, there it's was very stressful. This like there was a club in Glasgow that was doing a high school musical themed night, yeah. and it's not something that me and Rachel have necessarily like watched a lot together. But it's like we've grown up with it a lot. Yeah, you it know? was just kind of like why would you not love high school musical grown up? Like it doesn't make sense. Like it, we it just came out naturally the time for us, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I used like... to have the poster of High School Musical three on my wall. Yeah, yeah. So Memories. we were doing like a night themed for the High School Musical, and I love the High School Musical films. As we say, we grew up with them and stuff. I they... see. My motto is, whenever you're having a bad day, or like anything's going wrong, or you're stressed or sad or whatever, play some High School Musical songs, or like even just old Disney Channel Nickelodeon yeah. songs. You can't be sad. You yeah. just can't. And we know High School Musical a lot just because we were fans and stuff. But wasn't it funny like when Disney Plus became a thing? Yeah. And like everybody was like either rediscovering it or deciding we're going to watch it yeah. for the first time. It's weird where the show came out as well when everyone like yeah. went back. To- I never watched the show. Chris, you watched season one? I watched like, the first season, yeah. Then now, God knows what's happening with that now, by the way. Because All the drama. Olivia Rodrigo's like a thing on her own now. A big star. Yeah. And so is Joshua Bassett, I suppose. Joshua Bassett. Let's not get into that, though. That's like a whole other story and a half but yeah so uh, where was I going with that uh, yeah basically you could be love high school musical, but high school musical, musical people think I take the piss all the time when I'm talking about that I'm really not like, like no I love high school musical and I've said this before I don't know if I've done it on the podcast but high school musical might be the reason why I'm like a performer yeah you know no I mean? that would make sense because the whole first film is about this cool guy from school who plays basketball and is known as like the sports guy and is not looked at was that you? That was me. <laughs> as, not looked at as like a performer at all. You even had your haircut. I had the haircut. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then like, but he, but he decides to perform because he, he really wants to. It doesn't matter yeah. what other people say. Um, and then he does both. <laughs> I decided to go to the University of you, California. Yeah. Where it was, was it not Utah? Utah. Which is like more obscure. I can't decide between performing and basketball. We've we'll just watched two and a half hours of you trying to decide, but now so I'm gonna do we're going to go to both. So yeah, so oh, I don't know. I, I feel like vote. that is a joke that you, when you say like High School Musical so much, but it is a very big part of my life, I guess. Um, Should be. So they were doing this night in this club in Glasgow, and me, you, and I, and my girlfriend, we decided to go. Yeah, Keris was there too. Keris was there. I forgot. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I called Keris C. She, and she calls he's me big C. C. She's little C. It's the whole thing. Can um, I call Iona a little I? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Why would you? It makes no sense. It makes no sense letter wise. I'd also just the way the word I means. <laughs> Lil I. Lil I. Lilona. Lil I, Devin. <laughs> Maybe. That'd be strange though. I don't think I will. Don't worry. She can call me. Bigar. No, see, I don't think I'd like that, you know. No. You, don't I... have, you don't have any nicknames, do you? See, no. Well, I get called Moffat, like just straight up Moffat. Yeah. Which, like. And the, well. Not just me though. Like, it's like a, I'm going to Moffat's. Yeah. Like, it's not like. Ke- or just Kerry says it. It's like everybody who knows me now knows me as Moffat, and it's quite Moffat. Funny. Well, I didn't really get called Moffat, which is a surname. I was called. I would be <laughs> yeah, named a lot. Chris Moffat is what I'm kind of known as. I've mentioned that a bunch of times recently, like talking about people's names. Like we had um, Dominic Little John on last week, yes. and I just think that's such a good name. That is I a said good that name. to him. I was like, "Did you ever think about changing your name for like a stage name?" Yeah, but why would? You? And he was your like, "No, like Dominic I... Little John." And then we had John Crooks recently, again. Great name, rolls right off the tongue, John Crooks. Um, who, by the way, just put on. Uh, I didn't get to see it because I was 
for a camping trip. But uh, <laughs> randomly, Random. but uh, he just put on his, his first ever production that he wrote and performed himself part of his honour. So right. congratulations to the former good bit alum John Crooks. Um, but, alumni, yeah. Alum. He 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 mentioned like, what would you ever change your name? And I was like, well, no, because people call me Chris Moffat. Like people know me by my full name. Aye. My boss calls me Chris Moffat, and we're like we were like pals before mm. you employed me, and she still calls me my full name. Yeah. So. Anyway, anyway. Uh, I don't know how we never really finished the High School Musical story. Or, about, well, there's not really much else to tell. We went a night out. There was High School Musical music, kind of. Chris wasn't a fan of the oh, DJ. Yeah. I was going to rant about this because I was recently at like a graduation ball thing, um, or as it's known in this country, grad ball, unbelievably. Um, and honestly, I am not here to slag any DJs. I'm sure it's a very good skill to learn. And I'm sure it's difficult if you really want to get into like the sort of details of DJing. But surely, if you're just going to something like this, it's such an easy job. All you have to do is go onto Spotify. The fun part would be making the playlist. Yeah. But you don't even need to make a playlist. Just search like party songs or something and click play. That's all it is. But this DJ was going above and beyond to make sure all the sad songs were on when we were, making, when we were eating food. Like Adele and Amy Winehouse and stuff. That was, yeah, they did that when I went to the One Direction night, like the same similar thing at a club and they played One Direction music all night, like, they were playing, like, some of the sad stuff, like, and, like, fair enough if you want to play some of them, but I was like, you're missing out actual songs so we can stand here and all be depressed or not. And, like, we're in a nightclub. Exactly. Like, we're all about eight vodkas deep by this point, I don't want to hear little things in a nightclub. Exactly, so, that you know at this grad ball thing it was like, and then they had a thing where it was like his own website and you could go on and request a song. I was like, that's a great idea. Yeah, but you do that, and I do that in polo sometimes in a nightclub, like in Glasgow. We can oh. you can request music in polo, um, but then someone that I usually go to polo with knows the DJ quite well, so usually he just DMs them on Twitter, and he replies. Well, they're at the club. Yeah, he's yeah. like, hi, can we get like some high school musical or One Direction on? And the guy's like, okay, he like hearts the message. That's a good idea. Which is fun, but I mean, I don't know if they always listen when you you know, yeah. put in requests. But. Well, anyway, this, this guy had this website and we were all on requests and stuff. I must have passed the iPad round to everybody. Like, I'm surely I everybody requested a song. I heard maybe three or four of them and as soon as, like, nine o'clock hit, it was, like, all dance tunes, all oh, dance worst. music. The so worst. So loud. And it was, like, a wee old guy. It wasn't as if it was a young maybe guy. Maybe he was trying to be, like, cool. Like, yeah. maybe he thought that's what the young ones wanted to hear. So we went out and we just sat but at the bar. Wasn't. And I prefer that anyway. I prefer a bar than a nightclub just sitting yeah. in the So anyway, the whole point of bringing that up is we were at this high school musical night and I promised I'd bring it back to movies somehow. Um, <laughs> we are at this high school musical night and, like, all the guy had to do was go on Spotify, find the high school musical playlist you and you really want to play. That's all you need to do. But, like, I understand, you know, you're going to play some other songs. Like, mm-hmm. we had some Taylor Swift, some One Direction. We had um, Wheatus Teenage Dirtbag. We had, we had Kiwi by Harry. Kiwi. Before it, they put on um, Play My Music from Camp Rock. Like they a, had Best of Both Worlds from High School. Hannah from Montana. Hannah Montana. Yeah. That's fine. But, like, don't... They were taking the mic a little bit, weren't they? Like, yeah. it, just, it was a bad It was DJ. also, like, barely any high school musical. Like, yes, there's not millions of high school musical songs to spend the whole night. But they started repeating ones at the end as well. And you're like, well, there's other they, songs you've not played, though. Well, exactly. I was thinking it's just because obviously not everybody was there from the start. Yeah, but that's, that's a them problem. Yeah. So get there for a living then. We did. Yeah. So we had a good time anyway. Yeah. But um, Do you think our mics are going to pick up? Because you're shouting quite loud. And oh, sorry. I'm really close. No, it's fine. But do you think... It'll Probably be, a little bit. It'll be okay. I'll need to be. Okay. I was just concerned. No, it's fine. Thank I'm you. Not, I'm not a technical person. No, me neither. Thank you for being concerned though. Uh, I don't know if you wanted me to move, that was all. It's okay, God bless. Um, I was going to say to you, there's another salvo kind of thing. Um, just earlier on when I was thinking we were going to do this today, I was like, what could I ask Rachel about? Because obviously my, my usual go-to question at this stage is like, tell me when you wanted to first be a performer or well, yes, tell me stories about being on stage and stuff. Because I usually have like my acting friends and stuff on here. So I thought a really interesting film thing you did recently was watching all of Sebastian Stan's oh, catalogue. Yes, that's fun. And I wanted you to tell me the story as if I don't know it. So oh, okay. we can do it on the podcast. Okay. So uh, tell me who is an actor that you really like and would you ever consider watching their entire back catalogue? <laughs> um, Chris, Chris knows me that there's probably quite a few. There is quite a few. There is quite a few. I'm even considering, I've already done this once and I'm already considering doing it again. Not the same actor, like I'm considering picking a new one, but so... A very, 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 very strong liking to Sebastian Stan, the wonderful 
Winter Soldier himself. The 107th. The 107th Winter Soldier himself. Um, yes, so I... So I started liking Sebastian Stan from Gossip Girl back when I watched it. Um, I don't know about... I don't know what age I was, probably about 15, 16. Um, and then I remember, like, we always watch Marvel movies because obviously we go with dad and stuff, but I don't really probably knew any of the actors. I just watched the film. Yeah, of course. Um, and then I think it was probably about, I want to say it was about Winter Soldier time, but it might have been later than that. It might have been, like, Civil War time. And I was like, that is Carter Basin from Gossip Girl. What is he doing? And I was like, hold on, he's in Captain America. It sounds like you're a historian. It might have been in the Civil War time. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Captain America, the Civil War. Um, no, there was no the, the Civil War. The, Civil War. <laughs> the end game. <laughs> well, it's the first Avenger. I'm very I know, sorry. I know. No, but yeah, so um, that's a very Scottish thing. You noticed that? No, but yeah. No, but yeah. Um, makes no grammatical sense, but it makes so much sense. It drives me nuts when I go, um, so much. I get so self aware. I do. See, um, and Chris goes, that's my issues. That's my issues. <laughs> that's yeah. terrible. No, power. Anyway, I'll try to stay on track with my story. Um, <laughs> I just lost my train of thought. Right, so you you saw him in I was Civil War. I was, I was watching him in that, and then so I obviously always liked him from that and stuff, and I always just liked the character Bucky and everything like that. And then in lockdown, I think it was in the start of twenty twenty. I started no, because it would have been maybe it was start twenty twenty one actually, because it was January. I started watching them. And said I was going to watch all the Marvel films in timeline order for the first time. Like I'd seen all of them, but never like big through, big like Marvel that. fan, big Avengers mm-hmm. fan. So. I decided to do that and I, I mean I had all the time in the world to me as well and so I was doing that and just I was watching First Avenger and I was like I love this man so then I was like wait this would be kind of fun so I decided I would watch every single one of Sebastian Stan's films acting credits whatever on IMDb Um, I have managed all but two no I've not finished the Gossip Girl episodes but I've seen them in the past so that doesn't really count because I have seen them before okay. and then I think it's two. Oh yes two one that is literally cannot be found anywhere. <laughs> it said I had to get a subscription to PBS, which okay. is obviously an American network, and I did even think about it, but I haven't done that yet because I'm a bit scared I'm going to get scammed. That's that's when you need to start looking at like VPNs and stuff to try and well, get. We've in. got a VPN, so we should. I don't know, but anyway, that and another one that's this like Austrian film or like German. Oh, right. No, no, sorry, German film, and he's literally in it for like three seconds. I've already seen the clip that he's in. This was like his first acting. Okay, so you don't need to do that one. But I've not watched the film. I feel like that's cheating. Yeah. I did it for everything else. And you kind of found some hint, kind of hidden gems. I did. I did. I have a list on my phone. I yeah, she was. Rachel was ranking uh, the Sebastian Stan characters. Yes, but there was a very specific method to this that wasn't specific at all. So it was like, I'm, like some of them aren't particularly nice people, like character wise. Yeah. But like they're still higher up, depending on how much like I like the character, as in like. Oh my god, I want to watch his film again. And he was that good in that good. or whatever. But yeah. some of the ones he's been such a good actor in are lower down because, like, ew, that character was disturbing. I didn't want to watch that ever again. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, like, depends. So, like, obviously Bucky's number one. And then coming in last place is Simon but in Red Doors. Was which Red Doors you... a movie? It was. No. There'd be a lot on here you wouldn't have heard of. No, I know. And the one you kind of was pleasantly surprised with the most was Destroyer. I love Destroyer. Funny enough, the character's name was Chris. He played two Chrises. He's played Chris Beck in The Martian, and he's played Chris from Destroyer. Uh, the one I was most pleasantly surprised with that I can't stop thinking about is uh, the Education of Charlie Banks, and that was the one that I got the DVD for and all that. I got right. it like off of eBay or something because uh, I couldn't find it on anything. And then I watched it and I went, "Oh, that was so good! I loved that. That was so interesting." Let me go on and like put it on my letterbox. And then I read the reviews, and every single one was like, "If I could give this no stars, I would." Awful film. Abomination to society. Uh, Sebastian Stan was the only thing in this film that was good. <laughs> but and I was like, oh, but I mean, you know, each to their own. Each to their own. You can have opinions. I like, I like the film, and I'll stand by it. Another question that I always ask my guests: if you can remember any early films that you liked when you were wee, but also if you can remember the first time you went to the cinema. Right. Okay. Um, I know I brought this up to you the other day, you and did. you said that you can't remember. You can remember the first time you went without parents. Yeah. I, well. I know it was between two separate films, right? I can't remember which one was first, but they're both at the same time. So I went to see Maleficent. Remember the one with like Angelina Jolie? Mm-hmm. Uh, I went to see that with one of my friends from school. And I also went to see Faulkner Stars around the same time, so I don't know what was first. Okay. 
Um, Falling the Stars, a film that I watched recently for the first time. Yeah, so that was that would have been like 2014. So that would have been like mm-hmm. second year of high school. Um, and yes, I remember going to see Maleficent. I'm pretty sure it was during Maleficent, and me and my friend we sat the front row because it was one of. I mean, remember when you used to just walk into Sunny World, and you'd just like pick your seat. How random. You don't do that now. No. But they used to just be like, oh, like we want to see Mass and they're like, oh, there's one at half three if you want to come back. And we're like, okay, and we would get our tickets and then we just go into yeah, the seat. They're like, oh, there's like 16 free seats, just yeah. go pick one. So we did that and we sat literally front row and me and my friend are a bit disastrous. So it wasn't like smooth sailing, walk in, find your seat. We're walking about, it's dark, we can't see. It was like a whole thing. And then we eventually found these two spare seats and we sat there. And then I'm sure the woman, I don't know if it was a woman or a man, I think it was a woman sat beside us, like, sat, was sitting, like, kind of, like, up, like, real, but they weren't, like, sitting in their seat comfortably, but they sat and didn't move the entire film, like, oh just God. like that, and I was like, are they okay? This is in front of you or beside you? Beside us, because we are front row, so it was like, uh, yeah, so I'm I don't know if we were sitting in, like, the disability bit, I really hope we weren't, because that would have been really disrespectful <laughs> if we had been, but I don't think we were. <laughs> really disrespectful. But, um, no, this person was fine, like, they got up after the film, just yeah. left, like, it was fine. But she sat in the but same position and didn't move. It was very bizarre, and then, the I put popcorn on the floor and I kicked it over right across the front of the screen and obviously front row. This is the... why at this moment you were like, okay, I should have come with my parents. Yeah, I was like, right. And plus, obviously, the film, I haven't seen it since then, so I can't really talk bad of it, but it's not something I would, but I can't wait to rewatch Maleficent. 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 Male- Maleficent. Maleficent. That's it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I remember that and I remember going to see uh, Faulkner Stars and my friend told me what happened before we got there. All like right. told me in school oh my god do you want to go see this new film because this happens and i was like yeah obviously <laughs> obviously i want to see that so we went i remember that that was like an early one as well but I don't know as for films when i was younger i mean i've always watched harry potter but i don't really know where that started like harry i just I've always liked harry potter harry potter it used um, to be like on the tv like it still is now but obviously they're done now but yeah. it just used to be like on like maybe You'd be like, Saturday night waiting for X Factor to come on and Harry Potter would be on or yeah. something, do you know what I mean? I feel like that's probably where I saw it first. But I don't Timeless know. films, and I wonder, the, the Harry Potter films are like British institutes, right? I wonder if, like, because America have channels too where they just play films. Like, I wonder, did they put Harry Potter on? Mm. You know? Um, so we could also talk about when we went to see Harry Potter in the cinema. We could. That was a fun experience. That was a fun I mean, experience. it was... It slightly was one of those things, anything that could go wrong did go wrong, but I mean, it was so fun. It's one of those ones where I'm sitting there thinking, why do I bother, you know? Yeah, but I'm glad we did it. I would have yeah. I would have been sad if we hadn't went. We'd missed that. Basically, oh, also just on the same vein, we went to see Batman. We did well. go see the new Batman. The Dark Knight, no, the Dark Knight. Oh, we went to see yes, we did. Except for the last one, but we're not going to talk about that. I know, but they put it on the next night. It was it was problematic, okay? I was very upset. I know. Um, Still so, fun, it was Halloween in 2021, or the day before Halloween, I think. And mm-hmm. uh, they were showing Harry Potter. It was like the, what was that? Philosopher's Stone. It was the 20, no, I know, 20th anniversary. 20, 21st? No, it was 20th anniversary. Going to my age. Yeah. And uh, we did like the VIP thing. So we had dinner and stuff. Yeah. We went in and immediately there's someone sitting in our seat. And that happens sometimes. At least they were a nice family. They you were know, nice. I hate that. You know, it's like, I hate being that person in the wrong seat and having to approach someone in the wrong seat. It's just, it's... It's not illegal and there's nothing wrong or confrontational. It's just a bit awkward, you know? And it's like, what? And also because everyone can see you, so you're like trying to like, so just sit down. Yeah. But you can't. And, and also, like, I now work in a theatre where I have to do that like yeah. as a job. And it's it wasn't just, a ruckus. Yeah, I don't like it. So anyway, so we were up to them and I'm like, oh, like really sorry. Like, I think you're in a seat or whatever. And they were very nice, as you say. Mm-hmm. And they take like, out the I'm ticket. I'm having a dad and two wee kids two or something. Two kids, it? like going to see Harry Potter like a big night out. They take out their tickets and they're in the right seats. They have the exact same booking yeah. as us. So we're like, oh, are we here the wrong night? Are we in the wrong screen? So we went to the member of staff and the member of staff just was like, oh, this happened the other night as well. She, she wasn't impressed. She was annoyed that like it was happening. There's, something, the manager. there's something wrong with the app and it's letting you double book yeah, seats. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's not our problem. Yeah, like I'm still going to see this film. <laughs> like, are, we, are we not allowed to see it, River? So I think it was just like, there was, it just happened to be two empty seats and they let us go and sit on those ones. And then they were they were uh, separate. They were apart. And then like people who were there, the weren't the original family we spoke to. Other strangers were just like, "Oh, you watched it together." Remember, so, remember the woman stood up. She was like a young like woman, and she was like, "Oh, that's a shame. Let them sit shame. together." Maybe they thought we were a couple or something. Probably it probably but, happens when we're out, but you know that's fine. Um, but it was like 
nice for and then they were like we've all moved down and everybody yep. moved and let us sat and it was fine ironically enough that was the night we booked this holiday it was do you know what else happened that night oh. remember the film ended and they were like stay to oh the end God. for a very special like edition right. or something extended stuff whatever it was and we were like okay we'll so it, was it didn't go with plan <laughs> either so before the film started was it Daniel Radcliffe or something like came on the screen? Maybe like Stephen Fry or something, or like the guy that make the film. Make, make, make the film. That, that was good English. English well um, someone came on the, the, the screen and was like, thank you for celebrating the anniversary of Harry Potter yeah. with us. Uh, stay back at the end of the film for some trivia, some pop-up cards. You'll learn some more about the film. So we're like, all right, that makes it like a well, special like, oh, occasion. Oh, that's cute. Like, like, we probably think... know the facts, but like, yeah. we're, we're here. The film ends. The credits are so, so long. long. Because yeah. like Harry Potter, Star Wars, Avengers, Marvel. Like, yeah. these credits are so long. But we're used to it because there's post credit scenes in Marvel and stuff. That's fine. So we sat through and we thought, okay, we're gonna we might as well stay for these like trivia things yeah. or whatever. Maybe it's like a wee bonus we're gonna get. And I kid you not, the Warner Brothers logo comes <laughs> up again, and the whole the film starts again with factoid cards come up and like a audio wee, commentary, kind audio of thing. commentary with like Daniel Radcliffe, the director. Is it Chris Columbus did that mm. one? I think. Yeah, maybe. It was in like the top corner talking about the film and stuff and we were like, oh, maybe let's just going to do scenes. The and whole film. We, we sat there for another 10 minutes and yeah. it's just the film again. And I feel like other people as well were kind of looking about like, like what did we do here? are we supposed to stay? Like what? And I was like, surely it's not the whole film. Like, because by this point it was what, like 10 o'clock 10, at least? 11 at night because obviously like Harry Potter's a long film as well. Right. Like, it's like, uh, if I'd known this I wasn't going to Stay up, like hang about, like you don't. Anyway, so that, nice. was, that was a bit random. Can't there was no happen. like explanation either. There was no like, by the way, this is going to happen at the end of your film. We didn't stay, we left after 10 15 minutes, but I'm I was sure like, it would have been cool, but I'll we wonder. also have fun Blu rays of them that probably has that well, stuff that, on it. But I wanted to get home. <laughs> you know that I mean? would have been like, honestly, about 1 a.m. We would have finished that, yeah, something absolutely. like that. Anyway, so, yeah. and then as Rachel pointed out as well, when kind of this restrictions lifted they were reissuing a lot of classic films i mm. wish they would just do that on a weekly basis anyway. i feel like they were doing it for business because obviously like well, yeah because yeah, like Sony world and stuff obviously must have been struggling and they were always sold out and nearly sold out i don't know why they don't do like a classic film a week they so should or like idea. even a month yeah like have like a classic star film War- night star wars season or they show all the avengers films in order like i don't know <gasps> I would just go do it again. Yeah. I don't care how many times I've done it, I'll do it again. I just think that's a good idea. So we saw Batman Begins and we saw Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. Um, great cinema experiences. I saw the Dark Knight in the so cinema good. in 2008. I did not see Batman Begins and I had forgotten how, how good it was. great that film is. And I still I think it might film. have been my favourite one. Mm-hmm. I go back and forth though. I'm really bad at design because were all three of them were so good. Like because we did watch the third one eventually. Dark Knight Rises. Here, yeah. We did watch it. We watched it like here because we couldn't go into it in the cinema. But all three of them were so good. Um, and I'm really glad we did it before. Uh, like, the Batman. Yeah, I was wondering what to call it. That's why I paused. Battinson. Yeah. I didn't really know where to go with that. Rob's Doom. Batman. I was going to say Rob's Batman. And I thought that's, Batman. that's a bit personal. <laughs> We're on a first name basis. <laughs> Rob, a nickname basis. Yep. So they were our bats. Really good experience. Oh, there was a scene with bats. Oh, yes. So I have a phobia of birds. We should preface this. I have ornithophobia, um, which is a phobia of birds. And I, that, I'm that i sure bats fall into that category somehow. They have wings. And we also went to see Morbius. with, And I knew that it was about a vampire and for some reason didn't want to think, I shouldn't really go see this film. I'm going to be really uncomfortable. But yeah, that happened as well. Didn't and love Morbius. Well, yes, the, we don't need go. The, that film, all I, all I remember from that entire film basically was Matt Smith, him dancing. Him, him dancing? He danced while he was getting dressed one time to this really like, what was it again? Oh, yeah. It was like this really like R&B, like in your face, aggressive kind of song. Yeah. And he's just like doing like a workout. He's doing my on. Dance. It was just, it reminded me of the doctor because like when yeah, he was yeah. doctor, like number 11 and stuff, the 11th doctor, however you want to say it. And I was just like, there's Matt Smith. I love Matt Smith. Ready for this segue? Uh oh. You're speaking of Eleven. What did you make of the new Stranger Things series? I feel like I really like to talk about spoilers. Oh, yeah. Do we do spoilers in this podcast? Of the film, yes. But I guess. Don't Try spoil not do it Stranger, Stranger things. things. I enjoyed it. I show. struggled a little bit at the beginning. I didn't really want to watch it right now because I hadn't rewatched any of the other seasons. I like to do that when a TV show comes out, and especially Stranger Things has been off for so long mm-hmm. because obviously COVID and everything. And also, it just takes a long time to make a film, a show like that. Um, so I didn't really remember what was happening. Like I remembered bits of it, but 
it's never been like my favorite film where like I've kept up with everything that's happening in them filming it and stuff um so I was I enjoyed it I wanted to wait until I had like recapped but then we did find some YouTube videos to recap the previous seasons which was fun always helpful uh, it was weird seeing how much older they are it only get weirder because they're still going uh, but there's going to be like a time jump and I don't know if you know about this there's a time jump and then season five coming out cool so they'll kind of be of the age they actually are so like the kit like they're my age really they're 20 this year and stuff um, and they're still playing like 14, 15 years. Okay. And like that's close enough, I guess. But it's just they are getting older and it's weird. That'll be, um, that'll be a trip watching that. That and like the older kind of cast, like as in the older teenagers are actually like nearly 30. Like Joe Keery, who plays Steve Harrington. And Is he nearly 30? Like that. He's I watched like, that series. He's like 28, something like that. Um, Like Charlie Heaton and Natalia Dyer, who are both at that like, age as well. They're both like 28, 27. It's like. They're still playing like eighteen year olds, yeah, and good. that's fine. But it's just they are getting on a bit, so it's good that it's coming to an end. And it was, it was good. I really just have to mention before we stop talking about Stranger Things, I love Jamie Campbell Bower with my whole heart. And me and one of my friends has have like a joke about Jamie Campbell Bower, and we have done for years. And he was just in this season of Stranger Things, and now he's like the TikTok white boy of the month, and it's very fun. <laughs> okay, every month so far we've had a different TikTok white. TikTok. TikTok TikTok white, white boy of white. the month this month it's simultaneously that I said that quite well there both uh, now I called him Steve Harrington Joe Keery and uh, Jamie Campbell Bower which is fun fun anyway uh, anyway talking about the film that is the topic of today talking about white boy of the month white boy of the month I <laughs> I uh, asked you to pick a film you would probably say your favourite film of all time is Perks Have Been All Wallflower. Perks Have Been All Flower, but we have talked about that. We have talked on the podcast before, plus I've seen it before, and uh, you had been getting me or, or asking me to watch Dead Poets Society for the Could longest time. Did you see why? Because I was like, I think you would like this. Yeah. When definitely. you watched it, were you like, that makes sense? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's a very Rachel film, I think. Well, yeah, it is, but like, so we're spoiled. We're... Yeah, well, listen, if anyone's listening to this, they must have seen the film. Right. So, Neil loving like the arts and drama and stuff and like that kind of not oh, academic side i just did not see that coming what with neil or as in him like in drama and stuff because uh, <laughs> i was talking about that but yeah but I, I didn't know that was kind of one of the main themes the fact that's that, like, why i kept yeah. telling you watch it because i was like it's not just about like, po- like poetry, poetry or like english students like obviously because i'm doing english i think a lot of people just think oh she likes that film because it's yeah. you know about like poetry and stuff but it's not that at all like it's there's a lot to the film. There is. Um, so that's why we we're doing it for today's episode. Um, since we're also doing video versions of the podcast now, um, this is going to be a good moment for people who are listening to go and check out the video because Rachel has some merch. I have some fun things to show you. Go for it. So this is you, our... have to, you have to describe it as best you can for the audio listeners. So we have the Blu-ray, which I'm sure most people have probably seen, but it's just the picture of the ca- the um, class carrying Mr. Keaton when they're playing football. Mr. Keating. Which like, is funny, isn't it? Because in a Scottish accent, we all could say Mr. Keaton. Mr. Keaton, but right. They, but they really pronounce it as like Mr. Mr. Keating. Keating. Yeah, Robin Williams, man. What a good... And then I also have the book, um, which is interesting, actually, because it was made in a book after the film, which is usually the other way about. It's, just... it's usually, obviously, the movie adaption but it was made in and for a film like that you'd think maybe that that's was why i went looking for it and then there was like study guides on us i couldn't find a good copy and i had to get the movie cover and i was like i don't really want a movie cover of a book like i, I don't get me started on that but um i don't mind because it matches the blu-ray we have and everything and then it makes sense because it's from the film also it's, so it's quite same cover. In, like color and stuff it's like so... a wee pocket book it's small the text is kind of fun yeah um, I'm also wearing my Wilton Academy jumper, which doesn't make any sense because it's an all boys school, but that's okay. Yeah, but like as soon as I saw it in the film, I was like, Rachel, is I, I should be wearing that, not you. Yeah, literally. You know what I mean? I just wanted to match with Todd Anderson, though, okay. And then we have this is fun. You haven't really seen this. No. So the book that they study, or like that Mr. Keaton, oh, I'll say the best I can, Mr. Keaton. I have seen this because, like, when I, I recognize that. On yeah, the thing, yeah. He, he gives to Neil when it has like the speech at the front that he says when they go to the cave and everything for the meetings. Um, they ha- there is you can get like old versions you can obviously because it's Wordsworth and Tennyson poems like yeah. you get that so five centuries of verse of English verse uh, like poetry book and then in the front of theirs in the film has like the speech that he reads out when they go to the thing he's like I went to the woods because I wanted to live deliberately yeah. blah 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 um and it has like Mr Keaton's name and stuff and the dead poet's dedication and everything uh so my friend appropriately named Rachel she got me 
this as a present, and she got the orange version because we were. Oh my it. god! And wrote and the thing. She wrote out the. Oh my speech god! Start, she copied the like font that's in the film. She's got like his like signature there. She's get uh, that's Henry David through like thing. That's his like quote and stuff like that. And some of the pages are marked, but that's because they're supposed to like in the yeah. film. He says some of the pages are marked. You showed me this when you got it, and I was like, okay, cool. Now knowing about it, so that's it, such a cool gift. It was such effort that she didn't have to do that. Like she yeah. didn't have to write that at all. And she was like, look, I was going to get you the one that kind of looked like the one in the film, but I like the orange version better. And I was like, no, that's appropriate. Oh, that's amazing. That's yeah. a great I don't know how many are for it looks. It is a big book, so I'm gonna have to get like a special yeah. show for Dead Poets. Maybe that's an idea. So when did you watch Dead Poets for the first time? I watched it for the first time, I think I watched it in summer, actually I'll be able to because it'll be on my phone. I watched it during summer of some point, right, and I really wish I hadn't done that because, did you see what I meant? It's the most autumnal, Very wintery, autumnal rainer, rainy night film. I wouldn't call but, it wintery. Um, yeah, but it snows. But that's all, all. Other than that scene. The snow. But yeah, no, it's very. It's a very beautifully shot film. I watched it for the first time on the 26th of July, 2020, so almost two years ago. <laughs> right. Um... Yeah, I'd, it was one of those films everybody told me to watch. I always saw, like, online, my dad would always be like, oh, you would probably quite like that. Might be a bit dated for you, but yeah, yeah. try and watch it and stuff. And obviously, it's, like, an 80s film. Like, obviously, there's so many films from the 80s that are kind of like that, The Breakfast Club and everything. Yep. Um, and obviously, it was, like, right up my street being, like... 1989? 89, yeah. But see, I always knew that, that it came out in the 89, but it's set in 1959. Is it? The 50s. Did they tell you that? Uh, I, think, that? I think it's like in there somewhere like I don't know but I know I it is I didn't even get that that's interesting the book, but I know it is it's in 59 I didn't get it from the first time I watched it but it makes sense now with like the punishments they get and like right, the, I just thought it was like snow boy school and like the you know the like discipline and stuff like all of that kind of idea and like the against the arts and everything like that it was like everyone yeah. going off to be scientists and engineers and all that Um, that was obviously it wasn't as I don't know how to explain it. Like, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. like the arts movement wasn't really a big thing in the fifties. So. Well, yeah, um, that that's what I mean when it kind of took me off guard. So the big, obviously, twist I guess at the end, if you've not seen the film, is the kind of like the the suicide scene. Mm -hmm. um, Neil Petty deserved better. My God, like when he when he goes and gets the gun, I was like, whoa, like, this is going to be a big moment, and it's like a full circle from his dad or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No, oh, still didn't God. understand that that was where it was going. <laughs> Um, this is a film by Peter Weir, the mm -hmm. same guy who did the Truman Show. Yep, so makes sense, doesn't see it? See when you, it does. But like in this scene in particular, see the fact like the guy, the dad, like wakes up and you stay with the dad and he like goes down the stairs and you uh -huh. see him open every door and it goes turn on every motion. light and stuff like that. And then when he finally sees it, like that was such an emotional scene. That's so good. Um, film is obviously like full of these moments and like full of heart and things like that. So it's like a really like wholesome film with this total dark moment and i really thought it was going to be a sort of coming of age film not just for neil but for his dad too see when he arrives i was going play, to accept him sort the of thing. Stuff, i was like great like it's gonna be and i was hoping for it because i was like that's i know it's predictable but it's like gonna be a really nice moment yeah and it, just it doesn't happen especially because they give you like neil talking to mr keaton and how he's saying like he feels trapped and that and then he tells him like oh i spoke to my dad like he's going to let me stay in the plane. He's going to let me do he, it. He's lying just so that Mister Keaton doesn't start like causing a fuss and yeah, stuff. Because yeah, yeah. obviously he would ask them about it and stuff like that. It's I know it's one of those things. It's like it ends yeah. in such a right it ends in such a downer. So when it finished, I went upstairs to see Rachel, and I was like, "You made me watch a sad film, not because I was really sad about it, but I was just like, it doesn't end in like a happy yeah. note either. It's like really kind of sort of inspiring bit yeah, where they yeah. all stand on the desks and stuff. But my God, what a dark turn! I know. I know. It was interesting. There's an awful lot that, like, I don't know. It's like, we, I find that every time I watch it, though, I end up having a different favourite, kind of, that's not quite favourite, but, like, different, like, characters to, like, zone in on sort of thing during it. Because, obviously, you get, like, I feel like the first time I watched it, I kind of missed the other boys, like, in their big group, in the Dead Poets. I kind of just knew Todd and Neil. But, like, there's so much that goes into the other ones as well. Um, the other wee group and stuff like that and I love like seeing all the wee moments and I, there's so much you, I think you probably missed just yeah, because you didn't definitely. know how it was going to end and then definitely. if you ever watch it again somehow you'll see like all the wee kind of stuff they put in like there's a speech where it's saying he's you know like the start where they first go meet Mr Keaton's class and he's like showing them the old pictures in the wall and everything mm -hmm. he's saying like you're all going to die someday and all that and it's like zooming in on Neil 
and all that. Like it, oh, it does cool. that, and then there's another bit where he reads the thing out, and it says, "When I come to die, you realized I hadn't lived." And it's him that says it, and he like kind of stops. It's like all cinematic stuff that like you don't see the and first time because you again. don't know. One of those films, like like the Truman Show, when you watch it, yeah, you see me go, up. "Wow, this is." What was it with the Truman Show? It was like. He looks at the cameras or something. It was something. Remember we nah, the, uh, found like the, it like, on a Twitter, Twitter thread. Yeah, it was, like all the stuff we Product missed. Product placement things yeah. like that. Yeah, it was like things in your island that you missed the cameras. You actually just saw, but you just it's looked over. Brilliant. Them. Yeah, Truman Show's yeah. made the film. That was you just said that was the same director, didn't you? See, I wonder if there's certain things like that. That's see, I've watched the behind the scenes stuff on here, like the how they made the film yeah. and everything like that. Really, sometimes I don't like stuff like that because, like, see, like they're like Todd and Neil's dorm room sort of thing. That's like just a wee box. And I, know. Just like, I was like, what? You don't you weren't actually in a school? Like this, what? This is what I'm saying about the, all the Disney Plus exclusive I stuff. Ruins it sometimes. Like I want to believe that they're in a desert. Yeah. Like the Mandalorian is shot all in like blue screen. And I'm like, I thought because it's Star Wars, they're gonna be with physical props, physical costumes on location in Tunisia or whatever. An it is. interesting one was Moon Knight. Um I know you've not watched that yet, but they filmed in Cairo no. Was it in Cairo? That it's meant to be in Cairo? I don't know. They, like, shot it in, I want to say, Budapest or something. I think they, like, set up, like, a set in Budapest to make it look like Cairo instead yeah. of filming in Cairo. And I was like... Why not just film in Cairo? If you're going to go all the way to Budapest, why? I mean, I'm sure there was a reason. But right. it was one of those things where I was like, what do you mean you weren't in Egypt? I know. I don't anyway. want to know. Um, my favourite scene, probably, other than when he's doing the play, is Todd... Doing his poem. I knew you would like that scene when he covers his. The, covers Mr. And, and Robin house. Williams, Mr. Keaton gets out of him. But not just like as a brilliant scene, and it, a lot of it is probably improv as well in that. It was the way it was shot. Like, I don't know if you noticed this, but I, mean, I noticed these things more, maybe more than others, but like the camera's like in the middle yeah, yeah. of the two of them and it's rotating around them. Mm-hmm. So probably because I've seen it so many times. I'm in no way comparing myself to actors in this film. However, I recently did a film with this, where I did this. Right. Where I was standing and there was a cameraman in the middle rotating around us, mm-hmm. and I found it really difficult. Like, because w- I'm looking at the cameraman, and in my head, I'm like, the camera's not on me, yeah. so you just naturally drop out, and then it comes around so quickly. And you're like, oh, and you need to be in character again. So, this scene when like he's like freaking out, he's trying to get yeah. all this stuff out of him, and out of him our the classmates are still sitting, you know. So, that was a brilliant scene. The camera that's rotating. one of the, I think that's one of the best scenes in the film as well. That's one of my brilliant favorites. Scene. Um, also, I'd like to say as well that like me being me i know a bit too much about like the actors and like all the, when they were filming it and everything as i find to keep talking to you uh so like ethan hawk and like uh who played todd and robert sean leonard who played neil like and that whole group they were like 19 18 like 18 19 20 years old when they were doing that and, like some of them this was like their first like thing I don't think it shows. Like, I don't think you can tell. You wouldn't go there, new actors. Yeah, they Maybe might. some of like, the I never ones that. that aren't that important. But, you know, like, um, they, do you know what's fun? Sorry, I don't know if I'm kind of going off topic no. here slightly. It's still about dead poets. But they, I like to say they, that cast invented blo- uh, vlogging because there's a vlog of the group of them, like the group of the boys, all went to New York together to do an audition. Like behind um, the scenes no, but it's not on this. It's just they were just friends in real life oh, really? from doing it. And they had like a day off from shooting. So they got like the underground or whatever it is over there into the metro or whatever, into New York, like into the city to do an audition. And like they all went together because like I think three out of the like seven of them or whatever had like an audition for the same part. Wow. They were all going to the same part. And like they all vlogged their time in New York. They're like dancing on the stairs of the Met and all of this. And it's so cute. Um, And it's, this is kind of all tying together and I'm talking for a really long time. So feel free to cut me off. But it was interesting when I watched stuff like that because I don't really know, you know, like Ethan Hawke as like, whereas like I feel like I watch a lot of Sebastian Stan interviews. Right. So I know when he's acting, when I see him in a role, I'm like, that's so different than who Sebastian Stan comes across as in interviews that's and stuff. Interesting. Whereas I didn't really know Ethan Hawke really that much. And obviously I knew who he was, but that, that doesn't really tell you anything. And then I've never really heard of any of the other ones. Robert yeah, I mean, Sean Leonard is in House or was in House. Okay. Um, but I don't know how big of a role he had, but I don't really know what else he's been in. But they stayed friends, and they're like they're still friends now. Sure. Um, I don't know about the rest of them though. They don't really like. I don't really know what else they're from. But um, Ethan Hawke and stuff. What was I? Po- what was my point? I was going with. Oh yes, that he is very outgoing and he's quite eccentric and he's quite like and the really- funny person. Yeah. yeah, he's quite like the. He'll make you laugh if he's in a room and he's he was like joking around and he's quite boyish and stuff and I was like 
that shows how well he played Todd because Todd's the complete opposite and Todd's so like it's a good way to show someone with like anxiety or like uh like stage fright, I guess you could call it. Like just doesn't like, like being in front of the class, just like can do it and he doesn't like speaking in front of the other yeah. boys, like when Neil says to him, like, you can come and but just don't read. Don't, don't read. And he was like, That's not the rules and he was like, Who cares? Like it's it's just funny because it's like he is so opposite from that. And, and it's funny, like we things like that. Uh, is like we messages about inclusion yeah. and social and stuff like that, which is really nice. Uh, Ethan Hawke, I know Four. from Before Sunrise. I knew him from that. that was uh, really old. Boyhood mm-hmm. as well. Uh, that's how I know Ethan Hawke. So seeing him much younger was really nice. Um, I wrote down a few things. So obviously when he's doing uh, A Midsummer Night's Dream and his dad shows up. But I feel like I should also tell you my favourite scene, but we'll circle back okay. to that. When his dad shows up. Again, full circle, high school musical moment. Yeah. Where his dad shows up. I was expecting that. Very different Very film. different ending. Very different um, ending. So I had to do... Two women in a tree? <laughs> I had to do a Shakespeare audition one time, mm-hmm. and I had to pick a, a monologue. Did you do fuck? And I did fuck Sonic. I feel like I remembered that a little bit. I mean, I didn't do it. Re- I studied I did, the Midsummer's Night's Dream. I, in, I like, didn't do it, it. Like, in a show. I just did it in a, like, yeah. a room or whatever. I didn't do well. I'm not good at Shakespeare, but I remember like trying to like rush, learn puck sonnet so hearing yeah. him i didn't remember it but like hearing that kind of news character yeah. say it i was like oh that's puck sonnet like that's yeah yeah cool. it's so i watch a lot of like <laughs> youtube completions of like you might really not not really know what this is but like um dead poet society out of context or like merlin out of context whatever out yeah, of context, I mean, yeah. right so it's like they zoom in and like things in the background and all these things that you wouldn't see and it's so funny like there was one morning one morning it would have been morning it was like <laughs> 4 a.m and like everyone's obviously sleeping, it's dead silent, and I'm like belly laughing, like tears coming <laughs> at my face. Like I went to the toilet as well, and I had like earphones in, and like I was watching oh. it, and I was just standing in the bathroom, like absolutely howling. I was like, I can't go back out here. I was like me dancing there, mate. Yeah, basically like that, right? Um, and one of those things is when he's telling everyone that he got the part as Puck. And he's like, I'm going to play Puck. I'm going to play Puck. And he pure shouts. And they like zoomed in on his face. And it was like aggressive positivity. <laughs> and it's just every time I watch that scene, no, I'm like, oh, Neil. Neil oh, and your Neil. aggressive positivity. What happened? Uh, <laughs> takes a dark turn. Uh, let's talk about Robin Williams. Uh-huh. Just an amazing actor. Um, you see him You see him on talk shows and interviews and stuff. And he's just so funny. Um, and it's pretty like Mr. Keaton. Just a bit more. He's like the, the teacher. Moon. As much as I think I would wish to have a teacher like that who cared about things like that, at the same time, that's my worst fear to have a teacher that makes you stand up in front of the class and do it anyway, even though you're not going to do it and like drag you out. I think like, I yeah, would but, cry. But it's not so much that though. It's like you have that relationship with the teacher where you feel like you can do it. I know, but it's not the teacher. It's the other class. Like, I know. Everyone's staring at you. I know. But and like, friends, laughing. And the it's... boy that's like the cat that sat on. The mat. Yeah, it's so it's like, right, yeah, okay, sure. It's like that kind of boy society kind of environment. Like yeah. they're all kind of there for each other. Um, anyway, Mr. Keaton. But Mr. Keaton, I was going to be thinking, like, who is the closest thing you remember? Like, who's the cool teacher you had? Did you have any examples of teachers in school that were like the cool teacher? The first one I could remember was a guy called Mr. Daly, who I mm. had when I was in primary six. Yeah, yeah. I was really young. I remember and him. He was like, he, he gave off this really like scary energy, but he was like the nicest guy. And on. I don't know if it was like a Friday afternoon, maybe it was even a Monday morning. He'd like bring out a guitar and like play us a song to cheer us up, like just the coolest teacher. And then when I was in high school, I must give a shout out to a guy called Mr. Hepburn, um, who was really, really helpful Agreed. for me. He was my registration teacher, first person I saw every morning. Always up for a chat, always up for cheering you up, loads of positivity. We had a teacher called Mr. Clancy and again primary six which is kind of weird. I don't know why primary six is such a pivotal time partly in your life. I know. But I just remember him being like well, first, it was the first guy I ever had as a teacher, which I think was probably right? intimidating at the yeah. start because, like, you just grew up. I was obviously, what, like, my GMP6, like 10 mm-hmm. or something like that. Sorry. But, um, thanks. But, yeah, he ran, like, an art club. He did, like, basketball club. Uh-huh. One time I went to his art club and we all had to draw Wolverine. That was fun. That really explains where a lot of things came from in my life. And this went- is, like, before you were a big fan? Well, yeah, I probably, I probably hadn't really seen Wolverine, to be honest. I don't know if I would have watched any of the X-Men stuff back then. But, yeah, so he was he was someone like that, I guess. And then, you know, we had Mr. I had Mr. Hepburn. I had a teacher called Miss McLaren, who was more like 
someone's friend and their teacher but like in a good way I'm not saying that as a bad teacher way I just mean as in like I went on a school trip with her and she like looked after right, me and exactly. stuff um you know just people like that that like actually have a real impact on you Mr you know? Ogilvy my advanced higher English teacher he was cool like that when we left they all gave us he gave us a book that he thought it's a brilliant idea he thought like like linked to us like made sense for the each person like he thought it all out he wrote a message in them all he gave me great expectations by charles dickens because he knew i was going to do the same course he had done at glasgow uni and he knew i was going to have to study that and so he was like like to get you started in your yeah. english literature journey and saying that we should also mention mr fraser aka glenn mr fraser that's because right. i've never had him as a teacher because i was never lucky enough but i did see that he won an award he did. at prom favorite for being teacher. favorite teacher and i was like that makes sense because he does a lot for like I feel like any of the kids that aren't as included in stuff, and Absolutely. I feel like he's he maybe he's the closest we could get to Mister Keaton, even Probably. though we've never had him as a teacher. This is we're talking about he's Glenn, a friend, yes. who my co-host on the Wrestling Connection podcast, yes, yes. um, and obviously he spoke about his teaching like so much in the podcast and stuff, and it was always like some of my favorite parts of the episodes because you would hear it from like it's weird one of your friends becoming a teacher, yeah, because teaching Especially always at the school we yeah, went to, like he would come into my classroom crazy, sometimes man. and I'd be like, "Hi, your Just Chris's friend." Whole small world. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like it's nice seeing because I know Glenn and I love Glenn and I know like the type of person that he is from a friend's perspective. Mm -hmm. So it's nice seeing that kids and recognize like it. the pupils and stuff like recognize that and like award them for that and appreciate that. That's like yeah. that's what you want to see. But anyway, um, just finishing up here. Uh, Favorite scene from the film? Can I mention it, please? Just I was going to say no. That's my next question. This is the good bit podcast. You have to tell me what you think the best bit of dead poets is or your favorite right alternatively right this is a quick one though the my favorite scene for some reason i just every time i watch it it's my favorite scene is when todd is trying to write his poem in the room and then neil comes in he's like winding them up and then he steals his poem and then they're like running like round the bed and he's like i'm being chased by walt whitman and, and he's like another... running in the circle, and then all the boys come in someone comes in playing bongos and everyone <laughs> like in that out of context thing someone was like where did he come from? Where did he get bongos? Yeah. Like, oh. Um, uh, just well, another scene where the camera's in the middle rotating. That, yeah. I them. love that scene. Then they in, and then, like, Todd gets involved and he's, like, taking away um, Cameron's, like, thing because Cameron's so serious about his schoolwork. He's, like, taking his math textbook and all this. Did you, can I just ask you a question really quick? Of course. Did you find, I felt like a character you would find funny was Charlie, who's Charlie Dalton, who names himself No Wonder. Oh, yeah. And, is a bit mental. He's a bit. He, <laughs> Mr. Keating, and no, not Mr. Keating. Mr. Nolan is for you. It's God. He says we should have girls at well. And it's like, it's they're all like, oh, shut up. And oh, I don't know. I wrote down. See, that, like, obviously, it's like that boy society. It's an all boy school, mm -hmm. or whatever. And then, like, one of them goes to the party oh, and stuff. And you're going to say Knox. It's so weird, right? And like, because they're having alcohol. Come on, Knox. And they like don't. He doesn't know how to react. But then, like, I wrote. Imagine trying to use Shakespeare to try and like get yeah. the girl. You know, it's funny that scene. I thought I always think you when I watch that scene. Cause I think you would find that funny when they're like toasting these big football rugby players are like to mighty mutt, and he's like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> and he's like, Yeah, and he like just joins in anyway because he's like so lost. And it's just so funny. Yeah, Knox is fun. I like Knox. So that's your favorite scene. Anyway, so that's my favorite scene is them running about the dorm room. Um being chased by Walt Whitman and then I think I don't know what the, I would say the best bit is I really like the scene where he's teaching them conformity and he's like doing the marching thing and then yeah. he says like if you think you like you wouldn't then why were you clapping and then everyone's like oh, wait like you're actually teaching us something like oh that's a good point and then like I Charlie's like oh I'm exercising my right not to walk and stuff like I think that's a really clever well thought scene I also just love the visuals in it I love the autumnal Beautiful stuff, and stuff and I love like the lake and the snow the, probably like the best scene i guess from like a filmmaking perspective and stuff is like the whole sequence of like him from neil performing his puck and the total oh. shift of like he, he, the like weird that. music when he puts the like yeah but like thing on and the performing and a show like that is like and then coming having that buzz and that high after you finish it and oh, then like going that scene. going straight home knowing he's getting in trouble thinking he can maybe talk him out of it and stuff like that and it's just his whole world being taken away from him to the point where he like takes his life and stuff. The moment of like the mum and dad revealing that and stuff, and then like all the all the boys in the school crying about it. Like that is probably the best scene, I guess. Yeah. But it is uh, a great film, and I'm glad you picked it. Thank you. I love I love the scene when they go to the play and they all get dressed up, and then they're all in the audience pure cheering them on. Like it's so wholesome uh, until it's not. Yeah. But it is wholesome for but that. That's the like, way it should also... be, and that's the way theatre should be. 
you know, people should be That's supporting so their friends and, and stuff. And the teacher goes, like, Mr. Keaton's there with them, like, as if no, he's one of them. Why no, would I know, he? You know but I mean? it's so... just, like, nobody else is. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just, he's part of the friend group. I'm a big believer in that, like, supporting people. If you know someone that's, like, putting on a show, and a show you should it's always great. be there. Like, it's, it means so much to people when you see their face there. So, yeah. Um, love to film. film. Um, I'm glad you love to film. I wasn't able to ask you about it, and I'm really suffering a wee bit. Because I, I was like, imagine he's just like, right, Rachel, why have you picked this? I hated it. It was so bad. The acting was awful. I acting definitely like, was not I awful. I would have been like... Acting was very natural. All right. Anyway. Yeah. I think it helped that they were friends in real life. Definitely. All of them. That does come across a lot on screen. Anyway, these things. Um, Thanks for doing the podcast. You're welcome. Um, I'm assuming right now when this podcast goes live, we're probably sitting in the sun. Well, not right now because we're in the same... Oh no, zone. when it goes live, that's true. Yeah, exactly. I was yeah. thinking right now, it's like 5 11, I'm not sitting in the sun. We'll be on a Canary Island in a place called Tenerife, in a place called Fanabay, in a place called The Bob. Um, so hopefully you have a nice holiday. I'll be wearing my white hoodie the whole summer. Okay, we can cheers microphones. Bye. Thanks for listening. A goodbye. Yeah.